What's up, Culture Drop? This is Galen, and a topic I really am excited to talk about that my brain finally, I think, wrapped around, and I was like, oh, this. Uh, it is entitlement versus empowerment. All right, so a conversation that I think has permeated the work world in the last few years is this idea of younger generations entering the workforce and them feeling entitled and be like, they're entitled, they want this and they want that. I challenge that to propose a little bit of a shift in kind of thinking around that, which is this. Are people entitled, do they feel entitled, or do they simply want to feel empowered? There's a number of points that I wanna make around this that I think are all elements of the conversation, but people coming in saying that they want a seat at the table, they want their voices to be heard, they want more authority, they want more autonomy, they don't wanna feel micromanaged, they wanna feel like they can make an impact with what they do. I think that what people want is to feel empowered. They want to feel like they have a seat at the table, like their voice matters. I think part of the mindset and pushback around this conversation is that companies historically have done a marvelous job of making sure that employees do not feel empowered. <laughs> so anything that feels like employees asking for their voices to be empowered and to feel like they're heard and that what they think matters and that right they have an impact on the company feels like or can be seen as a threat in terms of like they're entitled. Let me put it this way. If you've ever gone to a restaurant and left bad feedback because you had terrible service, is an opportunity for you to feel empowered in that situation to say, this is not okay. And either this person who caused that, like this company needs to be aware of that, or this company needs to be aware that like my service was not great here. Um, I don't think that's you feeling entitled. I think it's you wanting to be empowered. I think another thing historically that adds to this conversation is newer employees, younger employees, or somebody entering a company feeling like they wanna challenge the status quo. They wanna ask questions. Why do we do things that way? Is that the best way to do it? Why don't we do it this way instead? And being met with, that's the way we've always done it. You don't understand, which in in some cases, there's balance there. Some Sometimes the ways things are being done are old school, they don't make sense, they're illogical, they're inefficient, etc. And companies like hold precious to that instead of being willing to be challenged and say, yeah, okay, let's do this a different way. And yes, younger employees entering the workforce don't have years and years of experience in terms of around business and dynamics, and there are things that they certainly do not understand uh, that they probably think that they understand that they don't, and that's okay. And I think there's there has to be a balance there, right, of guiding people as well. So knowing that those are some of the dynamics that exist, I think the challenge uh, for leaders and organizations is to, first of all, shed the, the mindset that people feel entitled as opposed to like, they just wanna feel empowered. They wanna be able to make an impact on the company, they wanna come in, they want their voices to be heard, they wanna challenge the status quo, they wanna do things better, they wanna improve things. And the balance and the capability as a leader uh, for you is how do you bring those people in, encourage them, right? Make them feel empowered and find ways to do that with intention, uh, not just for show, but to actually hear their voices and hold them accountable. Hold them accountable to still producing work, right? And, and setting clear expectations from day one that you bring them into the organization. Like, this is what's expected of you. This is how you're expected to perform and show up, right? And this is how we deal with conflict or when you have to challenge something, this is the way to go about it here. How do you guide people? And the, that sense of emotional intelligence. Of, of building and nurturing those relationships and feeling like people are getting what they want, asking questions to understand what is important to you in terms of feeling empowered here, being able to give feedback about your leader, about your team, about the organization, um, but provide the avenues and the opportunities for those things to happen in a productive way and still hold those people accountable to producing high caliber work, to being taught, to being willing to to grow and develop them, that is a skill. If you recognize that in yourself as a leader, that is something to pursue, to think about, to ask more questions, to learn, to shore up in that level, because that truly is about leadership, about emotional intelligence, and like you have to possess the capability to have people feel empowered, um, as well as hold them accountable, and do that in a way that is supportive, where everybody's developing, everybody's growing, everybody is learning from each other um, as well. So entitlement versus empowerment, I think an important conversation, but uh, a shift to be made. And so like, that's how to address it. We interrupt this program to let you know that you must eat chocolate. <laughs> I don't know. That would be a sweet reason to interrupt mm -hmm. a program. <laughs> Thanks for watching and tuning in. Subscribe to our channel. We put a lot of content on here. You can also subscribe to the Culture Drop mailing list and get these emails in your inbox every Tuesday morning. Follow our social media channels. Uh, put a lot of free content out about just being more awesome and building great teams.